What's up, everybody? Super awesome to be here. And this is actually Friday. So Mike and I are working into the weekend as we always do for folks. But everybody, let me take the time to introduce Mike Zuber, the author of One Rental at a Time. And probably, I don't know, Mike, would you say a top five Forbes book? Would you say that that would be a fair classification? Yeah, it's actually top three, right? So I made the metal stand. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. That's perfect. I know. Only only Mike would say, yeah, it's actually not number four, number five, I'm actually number three, just so you know. Yeah, and I probably should have given just him so a, bronze, you know. a bronze medal to start. Probably should have started <laughs> off with that. Yeah. You know, the, the, okay. the, the lumberjack bronze model, bronze, you know, bronze medal. So, but guys, what we wanted to talk about today, Mike, you know, was, um, you know, really how to plan your work and work your plan. You know, I think a lot of times, a lot of the questions that I get from folks that are either 18 getting out of high school or 22 and getting out of college is, oh, where do I even begin? My student loans start in yeah. six months. I don't have a job yet. I have no idea what this is going to be. I don't know if I'm moving home. I don't know if I'm going to stay where I'm at, you know, kind of what would you kind of lay out for them just, you know, in, you know, a few minutes, just saying, Hey, plan your work, work your plan. Where would you start if it were you starting over again in your, in your early twenties and getting out of, getting out of college instead of high school? Yeah. So what I would tell folks is with 100% certainty, if you are willing to commit the next decade of your life, you can have everything you want, financial freedom, choices, options, do what you want, when you want, with whom you want, whenever you want but it's 10 years, right? right? I, that's all it is. It's 10 years. And now I know if you're 20 years old, that's half your life. So it feels like forever. As someone who's nearly 50, I promise you 10 years goes by in a heartbeat. As someone who has a nearly 30 year old daughter, I can tell you 10 years goes by quickly. But I also promise you 10 years go by quickly for bad reasons. If you yeah. don't set up the picture, if you don't have that vision, you will make financial decisions that increase your monthly nut that make it much, much harder. I want people to realize that if at any age, you're 10 years away from financial freedom, it takes sacrifice, meaning choices. It takes getting on the property ladder without question. And unless you're an athlete or an engineer or creator, the only way that the average folks have financial freedom, have a seven or eight figure net worth is getting on the property ladder as soon as possible. Absolutely. So that's what I want people to realize. Is, is it's 10 years. I mean, if you're willing to do this for 10 years, dude, it's, it's amazing. I can do anything I want now, go on any trip I want, get any car I want, do any, all these amazing things. And it was because I lived below our means. I got my family's money right. We, we only took care of our needs. We ignored our wants for 10 years. And yes, it may make you feel like a social outcast for 10 years. I don't care. It's freaking, what time is it? 9.30 on a Friday a.m., <laughs> And you know what? I'm having a conversation about real estate. You know what? I might take a nap at two o'clock. You know what? I got a pretty good life. So, uh, and it's all because of the 10 year sacrifice. Mike, you, I mean, honestly, like the nap thing, like, right, huh? You know, like hundred yeah, hour work weeks and you're like, yeah. And you're like, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to take, I'm going to take a nap. I'll take and a nap. Here's, <laughs> and here's the, and here's the, and here's the best, two. and here's the best part. <laughs> Guys, your nap differs from his nap. And here's how, while he sleeps, He's making money. Yeah. He's making yeah. money while he sleeps. That was a concept that took me forever to get over. Mike was, you know, I was working my W two and working really hard and doing stuff on the side and all had my side hustle and had my regular job, and I'm doing all this work. But the thing that I realized was, damn, everything that I do depends on me showing up and doing something. That sucks. Yeah. I wanted to oh, make does, money man. while I was sleeping. Yeah. And, and this generation, right? The generation we're talking to in this video, I, I, I don't know what to tell you, but inflation is either going to kill you or help you. Right. And you know what? If you jump on the property ladder, you get fixed rate debt, <laughs> you are going to be the rock star of the situation. Because what happens if you have, if you average 4% inflation for 10 years, your net worth is going to explode. Your cash flow is going to explode. Your debt's going to be basically, you're going to get paid zero for it. That's right. And um, you're going to win. And if you don't, things are going to get more expensive. You're going to have to work more hours. And, you know, it's inflation is either your friend or your enemy. And I unfortunately think the next decade, it's either going to be your good friend or a really bad enemy. Yeah. And you know what? You have a choice. 
Yeah. What's, what's to say, Mike, you know, and, and I know that this isn't anyone's goal. I know it's not the goal of our government, but what's to mm. say that we don't end up in a position like uh, South Korea or mm. a Japan where it's 40% down to buy a home or 50% down to buy a home guys could be. We're at 68%, I think, home, you know, uh, home ownership right now, Mike, is it 68, somewhere around there? And I'm sure this yeah. administration wants to get it to 70 or 71. Sure. Yeah, I think that's exactly right. Yeah. You know, they're going to do everything that they can to put programs in place that allow you to take advantage of that. And real quick, Mike and I know what the wealth gap is. It's us mm -hmm. having assets and other people not. That's the wealth gap. Yeah. It, it, it again, there's you know, one percent of the world gets a lot of the props because they're great athletes or actors or singers right. or whatever, and they can pop bottles. Because again, why can they do that? Well, because they're getting reoccurring revenue from whatever they've done, right? For most of us, average folks, high school dropouts, ex cons, felons, you know, kid people who have kids at 19, it's real I'm, estate, folks. I, yep. I raised, I, shake, right. I shook my head yes to the to the uh, ninth grade dropout or high school dropout. I wasn't shaking my head yes to the ex con just for for, you know, <laughs> just so clear. for video's sake. It was on video. <laughs> Want to make sure that you know that I didn't know that Mike was going to say that. And so I wasn't shaking my head yes to the ex con thing. Not there's anything wrong with that. I'm just not. Just full disclosure. Yeah. Um, and and yeah, the, real estate doesn't care, right? Real estate doesn't, doesn't care. What's, what's your back? It, it doesn't. doesn't. And the best part is, is that last time I checked, they're not making any sports for six foot tall white guys with a great beard. They're just not. <laughs> no, there's no sport. I don't remember out. that either. No, there's nothing for me for that. You know, yes, great beard, you know, mildly fluffy. These are things that I am, <laughs> but there's no sport mildly for me for fluffy. that. You know, I mean, so it's like the neat thing is, is that they don't see me when they're taking my PNS, which is a purchase and sales. Yeah. They don't see me when I'm signing off, signing the line on that. And so it's the great equalizer, guys. That's where, guys, maybe I was insecure about it, but I was a ninth grade dropout. It was tough to get people to play with me. It was mm -hmm. because I was a ninth grade dropout. And they're like, they put us all in a bucket and they think you're X. I wasn't X and now I own Y and Z, but it was something that was the great equalizer. I was a name on a paper that either qualified or I didn't. And if I did, yep. the deal was mine and how I structured it. And that's the type of stuff that Mike and I do over the hundreds of properties that we've acquired that are differentiators for us and how we've built that wealth. And Mike, something that I really want to talk about is just in any market, any market, not really good mm -hmm. ones, not, not sort of good ones, not pretty good ones, not average markets, not even down markets, but every market we've continued to grow enterprise. Talk a little bit about oh. that when it comes to working your plan and the fact that really coming up with a plan that works in all environments so you are always growing. Yeah, that's that's something I really want people to hear. I don't know. I, it must be the stock trading you know, arena yeah. the, that, that people bring to real estate. They're like, I'm going to time the market. I'm only going to buy after a crash. Yes, we had a crash in the Great Recession and all of that, but most of you were too scared to do anything and I sopped up everything I could. What I want to tell, what everybody here from this is I have bought every year for 20 years. The, yes, there are years I bought more than others, but that's because I did the work and I found the deals, right? Every deal I've gotten, I've structured to make sure it hits my minimum yield requirement or greater. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter. I buy everything. Everything I buy, I intend to hold forever. And then the other thing I want people to hear in this conversation is if you're doing the work like uh, Matt and I talk about, you will realize when the market is overpaying for an asset. That's right. That is the huge thing. If you ever take the time to read my book, we were buying single family homes. Why? Because that's all I ever lived in. I was an idiot. I didn't know any better. <laughs> right? I never, I never looked at a duplex. I didn't know what they were. Right. I only looked at three bedroom or four bedroom houses. That's all I was searching for. Then the market got wonky. It got too expensive and I couldn't afford three and four bedroom houses because my model said, don't buy negative cash flow. That's right. So I was stuck. I wasn't financially free. I wanted, I wanted to buy another one. And lo and behold, you come to realize that when single families are hot, multifamilies are not. And then when multifamilies get hot, single families, real estate market is, it don't go up and down at the same time. And you just have to get good at looking at your market, realizing what's overpaid and what's undervalued. And you have this 1031 exchange, you know, that is just monumental. I was able to go from eight to 80 units with no money out of my pocket. I sold what was expensive and I bought what was cheap. 
Oh, pretty cool. I mean, my dudes, like eight to 80. I'm not even at 80, not even there yet. And he did that. What is it? It was like a 24 month span, wasn't it? Or yeah, 12 like month span. Eight, eight, I, well, yeah, it's 16, 18 months. No oh. new money. Just 18 months, eight to 80 on their trajectory to Mars before. And I, Elon and I gave my middle finger to the IRS because they got none of that. <laughs> hey, guys, just so you know, he didn't do anything illegal. It's no, no, ten, not it's at called, all. <laughs> it's called. It's called the 1031. We will absolutely be covering this in coming videos because we actually have a ninja at 1031s. And there's actually five different flavors of 1031 that I was somewhat unaware of. But guys, what he did in turning eight into 80, borderline Jesus move, fish, bread. <laughs> it was really good timing. I could yeah, tell you. Yeah. Borderline Jesus move right there. But again, that multiplication, that's what people can get their hands on. And you don't need to go eight to 80. No. It can be one to four. Holy cow. One to four. Like do your, do yourselves all the favor and look at 20 years of real estate back 20 years mm -hmm. and then multiply that by four properties. Yeah. And then tell me how expensive it is to buy a property right now. If you're listening to these other morons on the, some of these other channels, they could not be more wrong. Look at your market. If you're buying in a $1.8 million neighborhood, yeah, some of what they're saying might make sense. However, if you're not, you need to be doing the homework and looking and understanding what exactly your neighborhood's worth, where you're looking to invest and what that return on capital or in Mike's case, yield is going to be. That's where the gold is, right? That's where you yeah. put together, regardless of the market, that's where you put together a deal is based on what you're looking for, for yield and being able to pivot, right, Mike? Yeah, I think I think the, the thing that I try to teach and I talk about is every market has an average yield, that's right? Right. Maybe. And again, the beauty of my, what I teach is I don't judge, right? If you're happy in a 2% yield market, by all means, go nuts. Maybe it's, you know, maybe you only want to invest 20 minutes from home. Maybe that's your stick and you live in San Francisco. Well, guess what? It's not, it's, it's, cheap or it's a bad return, but maybe it's good for you. Or maybe you want to invest somewhere else is 12%. I don't judge. But if you aren't going to do the work and you can't tell me in 30 seconds or less what an average yield is, you do not have my permission to write an offer because you're gambling. You are walking up to the craps table or the roulette wheel, excuse me, and you're guessing a number. Yeah, maybe it can hit, but you got a you know one in 35 or one in 36 chance. You know, do the work. Do the work, learn your average. And once you know average, Matt, that's right. The world's your oyster. That's right. You realize that 98% of the stuff sucks and you just got to go work on the 2%. It's so empowering, yeah. enlightening, and freeing to be able to tell someone, Matt, in my market today, it's 6%. In my market in 2010, it was 15%. It changes. That's right. Do the work, daily work. Let's let's go. And buying based on appreciation opportunity is roulette wheel rolling dice it is not what real estate investors do that's what real estate traders do yeah what i what i got to tell you about this and again doing this 20 years i saw a couple of people worth 10 figures right not yeah. seven figures 10 <sighs> figures and what i have to say to people that do this is you're going to win for a little while and you're going to double and triple down and the market's going to catch you. It's going to turn violently and you're right. going to eventually lose. That's right. It's not fun. Well, it's the same thing that we're seeing now with guys doing real estate developments and such. You know, they're the guys that are out there and just pouring one foundation after another and then just following up the lumber behind it. If you're doing that times 60 or 80 buildings, that's a scary, scary site. That is, yeah. that is not a safe place to be. Yeah, go you know. look at builders, builders, mom and pop builders, they all go bankrupt eventually. Largely, yep. Yeah, they just go on a run and they do what they do. They built and eventually the market turns and it doesn't end well. So, and they're and they're usually in, you know, scary. three, four, five deals and you can't meet capital requirements. And that's when you see Mike and my shiny face. Yes. Hi. Hi. We're here to buy your asset. That's right. And at don't worry, we'll, yeah. And don't worry, we'll give you um stressed asset. Pricing. Value. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, sure. that, perfect. All the time. Yep. yep. So Mike and I depend on those people that beat their chests and want to be huge. And it's all about the top line. Guys, it's about the bottom line. That's the number it's about. It's, it's you're the not, only number. You're not a company 
looking to get listed and IPO. <laughs> you are your own organization and it only matters what's getting to the bottom line. Top line is for dinner party talk and doesn't really matter. Quite frankly, I bet if Mike and I were at a dinner party, we probably wouldn't even talk about that stuff anyway. We'd just mm -hmm. be talking about how a two by four cost me seven fifty and how I wanted to punch <laughs> exactly. a wall. You yeah. know how a fence that used to cost me fifteen hundred now cost me forty five hundred to replace. <laughs> God exactly. damn, cost of freaking <laughs> fence pickets. <Yeah. laughs> exactly. You're like, what are these gold, like laced with yeah. gold? Are there hidden yeah. pearls? Are there diamond dust things? in them somewhere? Yeah. <laughs> Hell. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, these costs are insane. Yeah. Well, guys, I uh, want to thank Mike for just another uh, awesome, awesome interview and really covering a really important topic, you know, to, to really every demographic, but especially in that 18 to 28 age where you guys are trying to start out. Mike, thank you again so much. Where can we find you? Just type in one rinse at a time. You should find my YouTube channel, IG, Amazon, Audible. It should be easy. It's all there, guys. It's all there. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for investing your time. Mike, thanks for investing your time for folks to invest their time. And we will catch you on the other side. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.